We studied the missions in my fourth grade class, like the adobe bricks, how to make them, and how the roof tiles are curved so the water falls down and it doesn't soak the adobe bricks. Everybody always says you're supposed to look ahead, but I, I like to look at things that happened in the past. Mission San Antonio was an early mission. It was the third one founded in California. It was the first mission to have over a thousand Indians. It had the first fired tile roofs. Uh, the water system was pure Roman. It all operated by gravity and the Spaniards had engineering manuals and architectural manuals that were written by Roman authors in the first and second century AD. And they were still in the original Latin in some cases in the Padres libraries here on the California frontier. This was one of the nine missions that was founded by Father Hinebro Serra. It was a very peaceful mission, one of the largest and most peaceful. It's one of the oldest, it's one of the most special because it's so peaceful and serene, just like it, it was in the days of the missionaries. And I think that our children and our grandchildren will appreciate history more if they are able to see what a real mission was like, a real community in those days. Uh, if you want to see and feel and experience uh, what it was like to be in an early mission, go to San Antonio because the setting is almost the way it was in the 18th century. You see what they saw, the same view shed. And because of the military surrounding us, we retain that pristine view shed. So we are able to offer a real mission that really looks like it would have looked back in the 1700s when it started. Okay, so that makes 40, right, from our last point. What's unique about okay. this mission is it's one of the only missions in California that is not encroached upon by the city. So oh, this is a very intact archaeological site. Okay. People didn't write in their documents the details of daily life, the kind of pottery that was used, the kind of uh, foods that were eaten, and that kind of thing. People just took that for granted like we do today. And that's the kind of thing that we can find out from archaeology. We need to understand that moment of contact when two very disparate cultural groups were meeting for the first time. Franciscan missionaries and Salinan Indians. There's a history here before 1769 when Father Junipero uh, Serra came here. According to the records, there was like 1,300 Indians lived close by here. Back in 1976, the uh, Franciscan friars invited me to come and hold an archaeological field school there at the mission, and I continued on there for 30 years. And Sarah Pilo, who was once a student in my class, has plans to continue there at Mission San Antonio. So most of what the archaeology has been focusing on has been the buildings that were right around the mission church. And that's where the neophyte dormitories were, Christianized Indians, where they lived. Um, but what we're trying to do is try to open up our understanding of the mission beyond just these adobe rooms. There was stuff going on out here in these open fields. What would be really cool to find and what we kind of hope to find is traditional style houses. And people just can't come and just start digging. They have to have a monitor like me, a Salinan Indian, in case you find bones. The Spanish were pretty careful about where they sighted the missions. They looked for a source of fresh water, good grazing land, but Mission San Antonio was moved once. The original location, down by the banks of the San Antonio River, two years later, was dry, a period of drought. And so they had to move the mission about uh, a mile and a half away in 1773, and that's where it stayed. It's cool, because there's right in front of the mission was an olive tree, and it was there for a lot, such a long time. Since like 18, like it's big. 
I imagine myself sitting on that tree. It's so cool. The fourth graders of California study California history, and you can't really separate the missions from California history. It's where California began. I'm going to go into the fourth grade, and I'm very excited about it, just to learn about history and to learn about the missions and the people that lived in the missions. It's, it's just fascinating to me to learn about everything back then, and it makes me wonder why everything happened back then. You know that the mission is made out of adobe, and adobe means mud. It's a kind of mud, and it's used to make adobe blocks, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make adobe blocks. And we have a lot of kids coming through during mission days, and they get to see what life was like. It opens their eyes. There we go. Most kids really want to learn, and they're doing films about the mission, writing stories about the mission. But it goes like this, and it makes a noise. And we crushed nuts and corn like the Indians did. And it was really cool, because I think it's a really cool part of history. We learned that Indians made the missions, and some of um, the missions had orchestras of the Indians. And I'm a fourth Indian. My grandpa is half. So I felt like some of my heritage was there. The Spanish did not want a military presence here, which I find very ironic because we're now in the middle of the Western Regional Training Center for ground support vehicles headed to war. Mission San Antonio being in the center of that has become a very special place to a lot of the soldiers. I had a commander that came over because he heard that we were a retreat center. He said, I want all of your rooms for tonight. He said, next week we'll be at war. I need these guys melded together to be a unit. We did 60 retreats in two years. We volunteered 60 weekends because we just left the mission. And at night, you know, the stars, the moon, the cross. You look at the olive tree, the cross, and this pine tree, there's a star that comes. And the, and the rays meet the top of the cross. And you're mesmerized. Of course, in 1906, they had the earthquake. And if you go back into our archival photos, you will see troops here when the church didn't even have a roof on it. For about 30 years, the mission was abandoned. People would come and do picnics here. The soldiers would still come and have mass here outside. And then in 1948, uh, the Franciscans worked with William Randolph Hearst to restore the, the church and to rebuild the rest of the facility. And so this part has been restored, but without rebar, which means it is not built up to today's standards. We live in an earthquake area. We want to protect the public that visit us, and that is something that has been mandated by the state, and so we will need to get this done or we will be shut down. There will be no one allowed inside the buildings anymore. This is the preservation of history. It's not the preservation of religion. It's the preservation of what helped build California and what turned California into what it is today. All the 21 missions played such a pivotal role in exploration and settlement. I often refer to the California missions as California's pyramids because of their importance not only to California but to the country and to world history. With archaeology, you're usually always at some distance. You find things that people use, but you're not really connected with them. But uh, one of the greatest finds at Mission San Antonio was a floor tile and it had the footprint of a Salinan child in it. And that's the kind of thing that brings you really close to the people you're studying.